Two men journey to the bars and restaurants of Scandinavia to find amazing beers, always with the same question. Hey, what's on tap? It's time to find out. Oops, let me see if I can get this thing to work. Very professional. I know, that's what I am. Nothing, nothing if not professional. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so today we are joined by Adrian, as you've heard. I don't cut any of that out. <laughs> it just sounded like some, some random fumbling at the beginning of the episode. Right. So today, Adrian joins us again because Matthias is uh, under the weather. And uh, as, as it happens this time of year. Um, and he said, Adrian was like, hey, man, what are you doing today? And I'm like, uh, not much. He's like, I got some heady toppers just burning a hole in my, in my fridge. I need to get drank. And I'm like, well, it sounds like we got a podcast on hand. <laughs> um, yeah, and I was just in um, in Copenhagen and uh, at the at the Himmeriet there, and uh, they've brought in some uh, something from a brewery I've never heard of before, but apparently is sweeping Copenhagen because I've I think there's at least three places where you can buy this in Copenhagen: uh, Himmeriet, uh, McKellar, um, bottle with a bottle shop, and mm-hmm. um, Torvaholland. And I think there's one other place, but I'm, I'm could be mistaken. But at least those two places, yeah. and it's from a brewery called New Orthodox, um, and I've never heard of them before. They're American, of course. They are American, um, and let's see here. Hayes is good. Old Nation Brewing Company, OldNationBrewingCompany.com in uh, Williamston, Michigan. Um, drink responsibly. Yeah. Right. So it's a double IPA called Boss Tweed. It's 9.3% alcohol by volume, an IBU of 68. It's got malt, uh, Pilsner malts, wheat, uh, it says DAT, Vienna. The uh, boil hops are Magnum, Simcoe, Citra, and Mosaic. The dry hops are Simcoe, Citra, Mosaic, and Azaka. All right. So that's a nice hoppy combination there. And the traditional New England Mosaic is there as well. Yes. It's kind of ugly, though. Well, in this light, I mean, I don't have the best light in my uh, dining area because it's more for ambience and not for uh, <laughs> highlighting the, the color of a, of a beer. But when I put it under direct light, it actually kind of glowed. It was rather juicy looking. Outside of the direct light, it looks kind of like uh, dark dishwater. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there is something about backlighting that actually makes a big difference here. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's sort of got that mud feeling. Yeah. All right. So let's give it a sniff. What are you? Uh, what are you getting off that? Well, I'm a bit of a cold as everyone yeah. else right now. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of tropics. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a. It smells typical New England, though. It's got a very hoppy nose to it. Um, it's got a little bit of head retention on the top, which I, I really like on an IPA. I like to see that. Um, it's a little bit. It kind of foams up, and it's very. It's like it's going to be a nice, thick uh, New England style Looks IPA. Very thick. Yeah. All right. So let's go. Yeah, let's go. Mm, what do you think? Uh, I think it's very vicious. That was nine point three percent. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think it's uh, extremely easy to drink. It is thick, as you said, mm. and there's a lot of juice in this one. Wow, uh, that is. It is yeah. super juicy. Yeah. It is almost like an orange juice kind of juiciness to it. <laughs> but not it's like, too. It's I feel not, like I'm getting my full day supply of vitamin C here. <laughs> <laughs> it's very juicy, but um, I don't get that sweet feeling that usually yeah. turns it off. It's still very, and it's not really bitter either. It's it's, it's not. It's really smooth. It's a little dry on the end. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's got just a, a hint of bitterness to it, and just a hint of sweetness. But it doesn't really go too far in either direction. No, there. extremely balanced. Yeah. I can't believe it's 9.3. That is really scary. I know. I'm like, I could drink a couple more cans of this easily and not feel like I'm drinking anything. Because this feels like a beach Mm. beer, really. Okay. It's just a a beautiful, thick mouthfeel to it. Um, Man, that is just so easy to drink. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's very, very balanced. That's that's all I get. Uh, I can (laughs) see why people are raving over this. I I feel like I've got to go back to... uh, to Copenhagen soon, and I feel like I might have to get a couple more of these. Yeah. This is really, really good. Yeah, it is. It is. I've been very interesting to get more beers from this brewery as well. Um, are is it those two that you mentioned that been yeah. going around? Yeah, yeah. It's the uh, the Boss Tweed and 
So hold on, I'll just grab the other real quick. Yeah. Um, very American looking can with uh, big letters and wanted poster style. It's uh, it's called the M43, and this is also from the IPA series that they put out. It's a New England IPA, 6.8%, uh, 65 IBUs. Uh, and it says it's got uh, the malt is pills, the wheat is oh oat. I'm sorry, mm. <laughs> the malt is pills, wheat, and oat. I thought D A T. It's O A T. It's the the lettering is very fine and kind of hard <laughs> to read in my my reclining ears. Um, the bull hops is a uh, calypso amarillo citra, and the dry hop is citra amarillo and simcoe. Yeah, and it uh, should also be a beautiful hazy beer. Looking forward to that. Yeah, we. Well, it doesn't say it's a New England on this one. That's kind of disappointing. It just says IPA series. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I kind of feel like it It falls into that New England IPA. Oh, it's very much New England. Uh, I mean, it's definitely, it's got that hazy, oh. juicy, less bitterness. Just beautiful use of the oats in this to give you that yeah. real nice round mouthfeel on it. Mm -hmm. Extremely thick. Yeah. Oh. Mm. Yeah, I, uh, I'm gonna have to give this, uh, uh, I think, a 4.5. I really love it. <laughs> I'm with you there, and I'll I, give it 4.5. Well. I think, I mean, it, you do not get the ABV at all on this. I mean, it is so <laughs> freaking smooth and just endlessly drinkable. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah it's a great beer. It's uh, we had quite a few really good IPAs together. Yeah, we have. <laughs> We've been really, really blessed in that uh -huh. in that way. Yeah. All right. All right. All so, right. so moving on to Hetty Topper. Not a giant. A giant in the field of uh, double IPAs. It was kind of the beer that um, was, it was right up there with like uh, Pliny the Elder, where people were just clamoring to get this, this double IPA I for think, the longest time. Yeah. But it's like in February 2016 when I had it the first time because they flew to Scandinavia from uh -huh. San Francisco or whatever it was um, it it was definitely the most talked about famous beer in Sweden at uh -huh. that time because Pliny everybody said like Pliny is so well balanced but if you want to really kick in the ass you want to try the Heady Topper um, so this is it yeah we don't have a I'm looking for a on date like when was it canned on but uh, oh, here it is. Uh, nope. That is just a random collection of numbers based on the can, probably. Mm -hmm. um, but shoot, I thought, because it says, um, drink this beer immediately. We're always making more. Uh, keep it cold, but not on ice. This beer is perishable and at its best when it's young, fresh, and hazy. Yeah. But there's no stamp to tell us when it was canned. So it was flown to Copenhagen uh, like three weeks ago. So okay, so it's probably four, four weeks out, four maybe. to yeah, yeah. six weeks, something like that. Four or six. So it's right in the fresh zone there. Yeah. All right. And this is very different. From yeah. The first one. Yeah, yeah. It's not, I'm not getting as much of the 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 hoppiness off of the nose. No, but I think I think it will kill it with the first one, to be honest. Um, yeah. Now, this is much lighter in color. It's uh, it's still it's still hazy, but it's not like um, like the the murkiness of the the boss tweed. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just got a a real beautiful golden kind of like an unfiltered pilsner look to it. Yeah. Also, nice head retention on this. Uh, still got a little bit of lacing on the glass, which I really, really love. It's very, very foamy. And in fact, they recommend that you drink from the can, but we didn't uh, didn't do that. So I usually do that. Though. Yeah, I do, I do too. Uh, well, I would if I had it before. But I've had we had the um, the Alchemist uh, before the Focal Banger. Focal Banger is what we had. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, the Alchemist is the brewery. Yeah. The yeah. Uh, Focal Banger we had. Uh, um, I guess right when we first started, we were able to, because that's when they released it. 2016. 2016, yeah, yeah, into 2016. Yeah. And that's when we uh, got our hands on a can and we reviewed it on the show and, and quite enjoyed it. And it did make a difference when you drink it from the can as opposed to drinking it from a, a glass. Oh, really? You tried yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, it was a little more effervescent in the mouth. Mm -mm. Whereas this kind of, you release a lot of that, mm -hmm. that carbonation so you don't get as much of that going on. But uh, uh, cheers. Cheers.
very easy to drink as well yeah. today for some yeah, reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is um, an 8% uh, ABV. Mm. It's really nice, very balanced, very smooth. Um, There's a lot of hops, but I don't feel it as much today as I did a few days ago when I had the same beer. Um, yeah. It's, it's, uh, I think it's starting to hit the downward decline. Yeah, or it's the order of wood drinking these, but um, ah, it could be. I, I, maybe I had, we should have hit the. Yeah, I had a lot more hops in the aroma and the flavor for a few days ago. Yeah, but I think it would shine through regardless mm -hmm. um, of the order. It's beautiful though. It's very smooth, and and uh, there's a lot of complexity. I, yeah. I I could never guess what hops is in this one. Um, I guess in a lot of mixed stuff or something I'm not familiar with. It. Galaxy, perhaps? Uh, it doesn't say. Really? It just says it's um, it's not intended to be the biggest or most bitter. It's meant to give you a wave after wave of hoppy goodness on your palate. Tremendous amounts of American hops will creep up on you and leave you with a dense hoppy finish in your mouth. All right. It is going to... Bukaki your tongue with hops. Well, I'm, I'm checking. I'm Googling. Also, don't be a D-bag. Recycle this can. Um, let's see here. Hops. So I'm Googling on a clone. And... Uh, the malt hops. They're going with Summit, Centennial, Cascades, Citra, and Amarillo. All right. All the classics, yeah, really. yeah. Uh, which makes sense because it came out when all of those were, yeah, yeah, they were in the Centennial and Cascade and Citra and Amarillo sort of uh, dominated the scene for quite yeah. a few years. All right, but this is really good too. I um, I feel the alcohol a little bit heavier on this one, even though it's slightly lighter. It's uh, like eight percent, as the other one was nine point three. Absolutely, but I, I feel like the it's a little boozier than the than the boss tweed. I agree, which is but, kind of surprising. But that's kind of nice, though. I know you're much more on that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> a little bit of the the boozy edge. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> no, I like it that it's more boozy than the other one. I kind of missed that in the first one. If I should do any complaints about it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it was amazing like, how it disappeared. Nine point three. <laughs> I should be able to feel every. <laughs> Yeah. Every percentage there. Oh, well, someone said to me that that was like 5%. I was totally by it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a session. Don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I can I can smell session. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't thin enough to be session. <laughs> oh, I love this beer. I, I graded this a lot of times. I usually put down like a 4.5. I, mm -hmm. I put it 5 on this one as well before... Uh, these days I'm so spoiled, so I'm I'm going down to four point five, but I'm not no. going below that. All right, four point five. I actually I'm going to come in at a solid four. I think um, it's good, but it doesn't give me the the boss tweed. Just gives me so much more, yeah. just in flavor and mouthfeel and uh, uh, the smell and and everything. Like this is a great beer. I mean, by by no means do I uh, want to disparage the heady topper, but uh, the boss tweed's just taking it and upping the, the game a little bit. Yeah, I, I can see your point, definitely. It's more interesting as well. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, I'm a huge Cloudwater fan. Yeah. Like, they're double IPAs when, when you feel the alcohol, actually. Yeah. And they got some more bitterness than the traditional uh, New Englands, mm -hmm. as I see. Pretty much like the Swedish New Englands. They're also more bitter. Um, when they go double, double IPA, that's definitely my favorite style but but this one is more true to to the style and uh, uh it's just recently i'm starting getting these true to the style new england yeah and uh i feel they're they're a bit too juicy i, I kind of miss the old classics when they're at their best which heady topper is yeah, um, yeah you know, I, I love a good like traditional bitter uh, ipa or, or double ipa that really you know, embraces its roots. Yeah. yeah. Um, I definitely think that's a great thing. But I also enjoy this New England IPA yeah. fad, which um, I think we're starting to see it. Um, like, what is the definition of a of a New England IPA? I think it's starting to kind of 
become yeah. a, a, a real definition, whereas before it was just like anything that's sweet and hazy, you know, yeah. <laughs> is the New England IPA. Yeah. But um, it's been around enough, long enough now that the style is starting to to form as a, a cohesive unit, and I think the balance is 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 getting there, where it's not just a murky haze bomb of of sweetness and, and tons of hops. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's becoming a more nuanced uh, yeah. creation, and you're, I think the Boston Wheat is a great example of but that. But what do you think about the uh, the Sticky Bay? It's new and improved. I thought it was really good. Yeah. I um, I didn't love it, but I enjoyed it yeah, yeah. I, I felt it was like new and good it was definitely not approved no it, no it wasn't improved uh, no. i thought it was it was a good i mean it's what stig Burgess does it was a good yeah uh, release from them but i didn't feel that it really brought anything new to the table no but i'm feeling it was though it was the first stig Burgess that i felt was really true to the style of new england mm-hmm. even though they kind of invented the swedish uh, new england version of it yeah, yeah def- <laughs> they definitely did there's yeah. no discussion about it but but this one uh, or ooh, ooh. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm <laughs> kind of curious as to see what uh, what Ollie does now that he's over and, and ooh, ooh, and see what he. They started coming out with uh, their old brands on uh, on tap a little bit everywhere. But Beardich had them. Uh, they had the uh, the muscles, and yeah. it's better than ever. The muscles so, is really good. Yeah, I think that's the, one of their the their new best muscles releases. is even better. Really, and what's really cool is that you know if you take like war pigs with so like two years before mm-hmm. they start doing good beer, but Uu seemed to be hitting it from the start. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, he was doing really great stuff at Stigbergs yeah. before he left, so yeah. he really kind of put Stigbergs on the map. Yeah, and then yeah. when he left, I mean, Stigbergs is still doing good stuff, but I think it's it's really like one of those. Problems with like a lot of breweries these days is you have your your people that establish your brand and then they leave and either start their own thing or go to another brewery yeah, yeah. and then it's kind of like well sure they can keep producing those same recipes because they know how to do it but yeah. where's the new innovations and I think you're seeing yeah. things like Cigar City kind of hitting that problem when a bunch of their brewers left to go form their own breweries and Tool for instance but yeah yeah but Tool's back Tool Tool's is back. Tool's yeah. killing it this, but it, uh, it took. Couple of years here. Yeah, yeah, they had uh, they had a they have a bit of a downtrend, but I feel like man, they're way back. Yeah, um, but but uh, when we talk about um, stick by it's an ooh, ooh, I'd say mm-hmm. that you know it's always been obvious that ooh, ooh is the thing. And, yeah. Uh, and uh, now when they're bringing new stuff, I'm kind of worried that they're gonna start making pilsners and sessions and all that crap. I don't want. Well, I think that uh, that ooh, ooh is. I want to say I heard somewhere that he's looking. He really wants to start doing like uh, stouts and yeah, I talked things to, like that. I talked to Olaf, yeah. the, the the other old, the, the other the brewer, the, yeah. the marketing guy, and and he he told me this stuff like Malmö Beer Week uh, two years ago, one yeah. year ago, uh, and uh, that got me worried. But he knows where the money is, of course. So, yeah, and uh, I mean that that's probably the most exciting brewery in Sweden still. I think so. I yeah. think they're doing really interesting things. I think Dugas is really starting to come into their own. Yep. I think they're coming out from behind Omnipolo Shadow and mm-hmm. uh, really doing some some very interesting uh, beers. And they're really kind of getting there with some great stuff, too. Yeah. I mean, I've had a few uh, Dugas beers recently that I've been... The, the Big Idget this year was was really good. I haven't tried it the, yet. The uh, uh, Vanilla it. Idget was not, uh, not good. It was kind of plastic tasting. It was weird. Yeah. Yeah. But the big idiot this year was was really good. Um, and they've got another beer they just uh, announced that's coming out in uh, like April. It's supposed to be that looks sounds interesting. Yeah, yeah. But um, uh, I'm expecting really good things from from them this year and in yeah. the next couple of years at least. Well, there's a lot of like I think that beer bliotek, Douglas, Popples, uh, and not only them. Like I think that um, breweries like uh, oh I forgot from my. Uh, Disappeared from my head. Brisky uh, or no? Um, yet or no? I was actually th- uh, thinking Opigords. Uh, if Opigord. you if you think about it, like mm-hmm. Opigords, they were groundbreaking for a while there. Like early in the craft beer scene, they did some really good IPAs and and yeah. they did the Turbo Stout when there was not really a stout available here except for uh, American stouts. And and when they did the uh, New Sweden, they mm-hmm. kept it's like it's very cheap. Mm-hmm. And it's a high standard, it's high quality, and it lasts quite well. I think uh, they're like masters in making a commercial beer of something really good. Yeah. Uh, 
Um, but they've been quiet for quite a while, and then they came out with this this licorice raspberry Berliner on tap only, and okay. then New Sweden. And I, I think like I'm really looking forward to what they can come up with because uh, they know how to brew for sure. Yeah, the Open Court's one that I don't like. I don't not like their stuff, but mm. I've never had anything that's just like, oh, I got to get some more Open Courts. That was, yeah, that was yeah, outstanding, yeah. but. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah. I keep taking a few new Sweden on my way out of the store. Do you? Yeah. All right. It's like that one on the West Coast from Stigberries to have a few new yeah. ones in the fridge when everything else is brown. I've been picking up some uh, dry and bitter stuff recently. Yeah. Not their, um, not their uh, kind of their go-to beers that we see on the shelf, but they have yeah. a couple of smaller things that they have on the shelf that I, I, I can't remember what it's called right now, but it was really good. Yeah, I've seen them around. And um, uh, Gamma. Brewing yep. has been doing some really good IPAs recently, and yeah. they have a milk stout that's unbelievable. World Eater, really, yeah. so good. Oh, really? I have to try yeah, it. yeah. It's an imperial milk stout. Is yeah. excellent. I had some bad beer from Gamma, so I haven't picked them up for a while. But I, I have the last the last three things I bought from them have been really solid. They have yeah. a, a double IPA that's just part of the regular system blog at release, mm-hmm. and then they have the the World Eater, which is the milk imperial milk stout, yeah. which is really mm-hmm. good. Um, I think it was it was called Amarata or something like that. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember. But I, I was I was looking to it. Yeah, yeah. I, I would. Yeah. I would recommend giving him another another chance. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right. So Hetty Topper, you gave a four point five. Yeah, I gave it a four. Boss Tweed both gave it a four point five. Um, so yeah, I think we we know it. We won the day. Yeah. Well, actually, I think Hetty Topper is better. Uh, well, <laughs> I think uh, it's a different taste here. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. I can definitely see where. Where uh, you know someone will like it more. Yeah, I don't understand why, but I can. I guess I can sympathize. <laughs> two two four point five beers. I don't think I ever had that before. It's, it's hard, man. It is. <laughs> it is really hard. And they're both just beautiful examples of what a double IPA, double IPA can be. Um, just approaching it from different angles. Um, yeah, that's greatness. Yeah, should be different styles, and it is sort of. But you know, they should pronounce it more. <laughs> Yeah, it's just a hazy double IPA. They don't call it a New England IPA, whereas they do have a New England IPA as well. So Yeah. Well, this was double, though. Yeah, that was double. Yeah. All right. Well, you can find us online at what's on tap podcast.com. Um, and, of course, you can find us on uh, Instagram, Facebook, uh, blah, yeah, iTunes. YouTube. YouTube. <laughs> yeah, definitely YouTube. And um, Spotify. So just do a search for What's on Tap Podcast and you'll be finding us everywhere. Please subscribe to our feed. We would really appreciate that because the more people listen to us, the the more important and better we feel about ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. All right. Well, until next time, keep drinking.